The pyramid is one of the most remarkable structures ever created. The 4,500-year-old structure took 5,000 able-bodied men more than 20 years to complete, at a price that's almost too much to imagine. Which begs the question, can we recreate the greatness of the pyramids today? Do we have the resources, and if we do, how much would it cost? Today we find out how much it would cost to build a modern-day pyramid. When it comes to mystery and allure, no landmark anywhere on our planet comes close to the Great Pyramid of Egypt. What you see before you is a complex ancient structure that has baffled scientists for thousands of years. They are so iconic, so ancient that it's hard to imagine that 4,600 years ago, the place where they now stand was nothing more than a desolate, dune-covered wilderness where a scattering of tombs lay under the burning Egyptian sun. Built out of Egypt's fourth dynasty's complex needs, they are the triumphant product of one of the most daring and innovative engineering projects the world has ever known. But that's all in the past. What happens if you want to create the pyramids in today's world? Let's say that you want to create a theme park called Egypt World, complete with an authentic reconstruction of Egypt's Great Pyramid as the centerpiece for your park. What would you have to do, and more importantly, how much would it cost? Before we move on, leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be the first watching new episodes. To answer that question, first we have to answer a few other questions. Dive into a little history about pyramids. How did they come to be? Who built them? And how did they manage to create such a magnificent structure? History lesson, ladies and gentlemen. The pyramids of Giza started with the kings of the 4th dynasty who ruled Egypt from around 2575 to 2465 BC. At the time, the city of Memphis, a few miles away from Giza, was the seat of power. Khufu, the dynasty's second king, ruled during a peaceful time in Egypt. Although the great Greek historian Herodotus later called him and his son out for being cruel and proud, his time in Egypt was very peaceful and prosperous. With all that money and pretty much nothing to do, Khufu and his engineers decided to take out a project that beats any other structure in the Bronze Age. The pyramid was the creme de la creme of its time. In part, Khufu had selected the site to distance himself from other pyramids built by his father and previous pharaohs. By many descriptions, Giza was perfect. For one, the high plateau allowed greater visibility for the pyramid. It was also near Heliopolis, where the cult of the sun god Re thrives, but that's not the only reason why the site was chosen to house the world's most incredible monument. Since there were already tombs in Giza, the land was already sanctified, so it was fit for a pharaoh's tomb of a stature never seen before or surpassed since. Who built the pyramids? Historians over the years, most especially Herodotus, have all claimed that the construction of the Great Pyramid today calculated at over 6 million tons of stone, was carried out using slave labor. While some have referenced the Bible to back up their claim that Hebrew slaves were responsible for the pyramids, others have maintained that the building was, in fact, undertaken by Egyptian laborers. We don't have any way to know for sure which is true. However, what we do know is that whichever party was responsible, there must have been, and I mean this in every sense of the word, a lot of them. Why? Well, you'll see, the pyramids aren't exactly like the other structures in the ancient world. You have to understand that these were never-before-seen structures fit for a king, I might add. Building such a structure required an annoyingly long time of planning, the best materials and, of course, thousands of workers. From the best architects to the most capable builders the ancient world had to offer, everyone was jumping at the opportunity to build the king's prize pyramid. There were a lot of activities going around the building camp. We know because graffiti and inscriptions at the site have also allowed scholars to piece together facts about life in this colossal construction site. You'd be surprised what a bunch of scribblings on a wall can tell. For instance, blacks found with dates from all seasons in the Egyptian calendar showed that pyramids were built year-round and not just when the Nile was in flood. You know what you need for that kind of consistent labor? That's right, people. If you wanted to put a number on it, the pyramid would have taken the labor of about 5,000 people over the course of 20 years. No matter how you see it, that's a lot of person years of effort. And you know what that means, a lot of money. Even if you paid minimum wage, the labor cost of the project alone would run into billions of dollars. But that's only half the story. First, let's take a look at the pyramid's design. It's 756 feet long on each side, 
481 feet high, and consists of 2.3 million stones, each weighing almost 3 tons, giving it a total mass of 6.5 million tons. Legend has it that the structure took 20 years to complete, meaning that a block have had to have been moved into place about every 5 minutes of each day and night. We know that it took a lot of people, but even people have their limits. It's almost impossible to carry blocks up to the top and back. To build a structure as humongous as a pyramid, you would have to find a quarry containing that much stone, cut the stone out of the quarry, load it onto a truck or train, haul it to the site, unload it, lift it, and you get the idea. Needless to say, this would be a major pain, doable of course, but a pain nonetheless. With the way the pyramids are shaped, the Egyptians worked their way up through the inside of the structure, building and fitting stone blocks into place as they ascended. Some architects and Egyptologists believe that the ancient Egyptians must have had some sort of contraption to help them haul up the stones, but even that wouldn't do a lot. Surely there has to be an easier way. Luckily, using today's technology, there is. In today's world, wayward rocks are a no-no. To build pyramids the modern way, you'd have to go with concrete. With concrete, you can easily mold the shape you want and pour. Take the Hoover Dam, for example. It was built on the Colorado River during the Great Depression, and it has about as much concrete in it as the Great Pyramid has stone. The Hoover Dam needs more than 3 million cubic yards of concrete. Because of the setting time for concrete and the amount of heat generated during the setting process, the dam was poured in sections 50 by 50 feet on a side and 5 feet deep. Workers stuck in cooling pipes in the concrete as they poured it to allow cold water to run through to help remove the heat during setting. Typically, a 5-foot deep block would need about 36 to 72 hours before another block would go on top of it. Using this technique, they covered the entire Hoover Dam in less than two years. This technique would work great for recreating the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid is even slightly smaller than the Hoover Dam, so only about 2.5 million cubic yards of concrete would be needed. Still, that doesn't mean the project would be less expensive, though. If you're buying it by the truckload, concrete costs about $80 per square yard. For a big job like this, you would need to build your own concrete plant. Let's say that by doing so, you get the cost down to $50 per square yard. This means concrete alone will cost $125 million. But don't forget, you still have to cover the cost for labor, design, and so on. Let's be honest, the truth is that even with cranes, helicopters, tractors, and trucks at our disposal, it would be pretty tough to build the Great Pyramid of Giza today. It's expected, too. After all, 4,500 years ago, when it was constructed, it was so astounding in some people's eyes that they thought it was created by aliens. Don't blame them. I mean, who wouldn't think aliens were responsible? Back then, humans believed the Earth was flat, the stars were spirits of their ancestors, and there's this enormous structure sitting in the midst of all that ignorance. The pyramid was far beyond its time. It's actually part of why the pyramid is so intriguing. To think humans were capable of such a feat 4,500 years ago is jaw-dropping. Still, this is 2021, and we've come a long way since then. Although most of the techniques the Egyptians adopted were genius at the time, they wouldn't work so well today. There would be two main differences between building pyramids then and now. First, instead of people pulling the sledges that carry the stones up the ramps, you would use something like an engine. For the topmost part, you'd likely most need a crane. A helicopter would have to place a crane on a flat top of the pyramid the way they're placed on tops of skyscrapers today. Stones and other construction materials dragged up to that level with the ramp would then be set in place by the crane. Voila! You have yourself a modern-day pyramid with a few years to spare. While the pyramid was initially built by 5,000 workers for 20 crushing years using brute strength, sledges, and ropes, constructing the pyramid today using stone-carrying vehicles, cranes, and helicopters would probably take 1,500 to 2,000 workers somewhere between 4 to 5 years. How's that? How much would all of that cost? Let's just say all in all, from labor to materials, it would cost nothing less than $5 billion to replicate the wonder of the ancient world. Granted, there are no plans to erect any pyramid-like structures that we know of anyway. Still, it's good to know that if we ever want to, it's $5 billion away. Oh, and yeah, if you've also ever wanted to build a pyramid, now you know how much you need. Thanks for watching. Leave the comment down below and let us know what do you think. Don't forget to subscribe for new and upcoming episodes. So